Welcome, kids. Welcome to, uh, what is it? We change it every week. Uh, it's Uncle Glenn's Political Peanut Gallery. Yeah. Yeah. And it's those kind of alliterations that got me through college. Uh, and we have an extra, extra special guest today, Senor Lalo Alcaraz. Here he is. Give a shot of him. And this guy. Is this the Wally George show? <laughs> um, Did I get on the wrong set? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's kind of like the George Putnam yak back at the news. Remember that? Oh, yeah. I'm inclined to agree with you, young man. Yeah, okay. So anyway, no, this guy, this guy is a political... <laughs> see, see, every time I say it. Political satirist, uh, humorist... And uh, what do you call those guys that... Uh, that cartoonists? He's a cartoonist. He's in the LA Times, as you guys read. And um, we're going to bring him on after the break, and we're going to have... Uh, well, you'll see what he does. Just stick around and don't go, because finally we got a good guest in here. We took his keys. Uh, we, told him, we told him it was valet parking. We don't have valet parking, but he can't get away. And we... Which brings me to our first song, I guess. Are we going to have the peanut gallery sing along because it's the Uncle Glenn, whatever the heck. Okay, ready? It's Uncle Glenn again. It's Uncle Glenn again. We couldn't get away because Charter made us stay. All of the doors are locked. They have the exits blocked. We have nowhere to go. Let's watch the show. Yay! <laughs> Roll something. Save me here. Well, well. television broadcasting by majoring in telecommunications and political sciences. It is no wonder that she has also been recognized by who's who, since she has displayed her leadership in all areas from academics to student politics to athletics, having led her basketball team to the championship of the state tournament. Oh, my. That's the most articulate Sarah Palin's ever been. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> she looks better walking away, I noticed. It's, That is fine. Oh, we're gonna. Oh, oh what is this? Uh, we're gonna do a song because we always do a song on Uncle Glenn's whatnot. And um, here we go. That, hang on, hang on. <coughs> yeah, very good. Okay. It's a jungle out there, disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's a jungle out there, poison in the very air we breathe. Do you know what's in the water that you drink? Well, I do. It's amazing. People think I'm crazy because I worry all the time. If you paid attention, you'd be worried too. You better pay attention. All this world we love so much might just kill you. I could be wrong now, but I don't think so. Because it's a jungle out there. It's a jungle out there. Ah, 
Ah, uh, is there no beginning to the man's talent? <laughs> yeah. Now what do I do, Ron? I, I'm, I'm as dry as the Nile in winter here. I know, I'll have some coffee. Who took my coffee? We are brought to you today by something. A big blob of orange stuff that I can't read from here. What is that? Cinnamon, <laughs> cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon whiz. Holy crap. Glenn, Glenn, mm -hmm. that is laminate floor with whiz. <laughs> Special ingredient whiz. You got any with the whiz left out? Uh, oh my lord. Well, that's important stuff. Um, oh, wait a minute. Is everything I play in the key of C? I ask you. <laughs> wait a minute. C. Ah. <laughs> Somebody move the peanut gallery over to this side. <laughs> Yank my doodle, it's a dandy. Oh, never mind. Okay. I apologize for all the rotten things I haven't done yet, okay? Just getting into it. When does the show start? A politician is a politician is a fellow who will lay down your life for his country. That's the kind of pithy stuff we need from the booth, you know? This is, say something useful. Start the show. <laughs> what a challenge it is because in 1988, the question is whether we're going to go forward to tomorrow or we're going to go past to the, the, the back. And I can tell you, listen, past the back, that's a, that's a Hoosierism. Woman walks into the hardware store and says, I would like to buy a hinge, please. The guy says, yes, ma'am, would you like a screw for that hinge? <laughs> she says, no. <laughs> All right, never mind. <laughs> okay. Adults keep making wars. The next war will probably kill everybody on Earth, including me. Parrots are hypocrites. They tell us one thing, but then they do another. Why don't they practice what they preach? Why are adults so hung up with making money? That's all they think about. School's a real bummer. <laughs> dull teachers, dull subjects. I just can't wait to get out. Why can't we dress the way we want in school? Hey, sure, hey, we're old enough to be game. drafted, uh -oh. but we're not old hey, enough hey, to vote. Why are they always treating us like children? You know, they're treating them like children and now they're all in nursing homes. Is that sad? <laughs> it's not sad. Uh, uh, oh yeah, this is my, this is my new, uh, I'm selling these in the parking lot out by the the freeway off ramp. This is contra la ley, against the law. What is it? Law, stay away. You light this candle, and uh, the feds can't come to your house and uh, neuter your pit bulls. <laughs> How much? <laughs> Thank, what have you got? It's yours, baby. Come up. This is your prize. Take it. Yeah, it's yours. It's yours. All our prizes here are perfect for uh, putting under the short leg of your pool table. I'm I'm really sorry you had to see that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ron is some kind of producer, I gotta tell you. Ron, I was defending you earlier before the show started. They said you were two-faced. And I said, no, I won't have it. Because if he had two faces, why would he wear that one? Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm voting for Phil, I think, on this. Not, we're not voting for the schmuck this time around. They got in last time, and all we got for our trouble was, uh, what did we get? The government. The government. Always remember, no matter who you vote for, the government always gets in. Oh, I forget that. There's another surprise in the key of C for you. When a man loves a chicken... 
He stays in the barn for the good things that he's found. <laughs> oh, I know what I forgot. I forgot all my, uh, I forgot my fake books and everything. All my life I've wanted to be a cop, to keep this city a safe place to live. So what do I have to do? I gotta arrest people for smoking. For smoking. Do you want to hear the capper? We can't even smoke here in our own squad room. That's the way it would be with Proposition 5. They're at it again. Have they taken leave of their senses? Hey, we got more important work to do. come to a closet full of trombones I always I always look at them <laughs> my bad acid noises we're gonna break we're gonna take a break and then come back to the interview we're gonna start the interview <laughs> that would be nice <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute born in Chihuahua in 1903 <laughs> On a serape out on the red tree, he was so fat he could almost not see. He could eat 12 tacos when he was only three. Pancho, Pancho Lopez. <laughs> Our guest today, bringing this is Lalo Alcaraz. He's going to save me from a fate worse than this show. I doubt there is one. <laughs> you know what? You're right. Uh, now, Lalo, thank you for being on our show. Sure. Thank sure. you for coming down and braving these horrid people in the audience. You're a brave man. And uh, you're a kind man, the kind I don't need. Thank you. Man. That's a good joke. Now, let's just start at the beginning. I got my questions. I got my questions. And I got... In case the questions don't work, I got a plastic alligator. Well, that will, that will help. So, Ali, I don't know how to say that in Spanish. But. Okay. What's your favorite color? Who wrote these? <laughs> All right, we'll just start. What, now, where'd you grow up? Where'd, we're going to start, like, how you got your uh, inspiration. Well, I grew up in San Diego, uh, California, on the border. Uh, we used to go back and forth, Tijuana, San Diego. And uh, that was probably responsible for some of, some, of, some of my rage and bitterness, but, you know. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's probably angry at the uh, racist white devil, folks. Uh, <laughs> watch out. That'll be me. Uh, well, uh, growing up in San Diego, uh, it, it was uh, pretty funny because uh, San Diego uh, sits, uh, you know, 20 minutes from the border crossing, you know, San Diego proper, San Isidro is the crossing, and then Tijuana is there, and it's, San Diego has, uh, at least when I was growing up, an, an extreme denial that it was on the Mexican border. Oh. Uh, and so... Where did and, you think it um, was? Uh, I was pretty sure it was right on the border. Oh, all right. But the city uh, would, uh, you know, they, they, they had a, a mascot, Don Diego, you know, like a big... Spanish dude, you know, yeah, like, uh, yeah, he was like, I was, I think he was Zorro's Bruce Wayne, you know, so, yeah. Sorry. so, but, but, you know, everything was like either Spanish or, you know, anything but Mexican. Did they sell uh, this stuff down there when they? Donkey's milk, yes, and uh, some of the bars in Tijuana, you can actually Greasy. get this. You can watch this being made, actually. Uh, Plucked from the unwilling donkey. <laughs> So you grew up there. How many did you have? A lot of brothers and sisters. A lot of. Uh, well, uh, no, I'm an only child. Uh, uh oh. I, you know, I have half brothers and sisters in in Mexico, uh, in Zacatecas. Uh, 
And those are fighting words in my country. What Pretty you? much, yeah. Uh, and uh, and also my uh, my parents met uh, actually. Well, you know, a, a lot of Mexicans from the west coast of Mexico and from the from Sonora and su such areas come through San Diego, co uh, come through Tijuana, and they uh, stay there for a while. Would cr cross over. Um, and uh, you know, make their make their way either into the interior or stay there in San Diego. Come to L.A. Uh, the interior of what? Of this country? Oh, oh, oh. Irwindale. It's <laughs> <laughs> a frightening. Pro <laughs> I think most of them are here. Look, yeah, there they are. So. Uh, so then, something something made you angry enough to pick up a pencil. Yeah, something I. Uh, well, you know, uh, genetics uh, allowed me to pick up a pencil because a lot of my, uh, uh, old, my, my, my first cousins in Mexico all uh, draw, paint, sing, uh, have cable shows. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, and, uh, well, who doesn't? <laughs> and so uh, it kind of runs in our family to, uh, you know, be artistic. But uh, when I grew up, uh, I saw how my parents were... Uh, were treated uh, as uh, uh, immigrants and the way they were mistreated. And so that kind of led to a lot of my being pissed off. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, we got an angry guest. Now we're getting something. I'm much more mellower now. Are you? Even after today. <laughs> it was the free donuts that <laughs> calmed you down. You can sure. sell the rest of those if you like. Yeah, I will. Down by the freeway. So. Um, <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. So what was the first, like, when you picked up the pencil and you started drawing something, what was the first thing that kind of channeled what you were feeling? Like, did you have char characters right from the start, or did you, you know, draw landscapes? I mean, what? I think I actually probably, have, the, the whole graffiti art thing passed me by. I'm probably, probably about five years too old to have experienced that. Uh, to, uh, uh, and... Uh, I just was writing on the wall, you know. I was writing. <laughs> I was Whose writing, wall? I, I was writing gang stuff on the on, oh, on every wall possible. So, um, but uh, I would draw whatever uh, you know kids did. But I, I actually I would read Mad Magazine. Ah. Uh, I always uh, advise uh, parents don't let your kids uh, read Mad Magazine unless you know because yeah. they're gonna turn out like me. You know? uh, and uh, what the cool thing about Mad Magazine is that it's it's like uh, it teaches you that. Satire is a is another language, you know. So, mm -hmm. which could screw you up too, you know. Like I, I'm not, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, and, and you see you see things differently from other people. But uh, it also satire teaches you, you know, critical thinking skills. I think, yes. which sometimes are lacking in our schools. Sometimes. You know, I, <laughs> you know what? I'm right there. I think they ought to get rid of all those Texas textbooks and put Mad in there. No, you know. We'd be better off. I think so. And now, uh, Ron, did you have a little uh, something to throw at us at this point? It is just wonderful to be back in Oregon. And over the last 15 months, we've traveled uh, to every corner of the United States. Uh, I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. All right. Uh, do we show us some of the stuff you brought. Sure, show us sure. Uh, my, show uh, and tell. Let's get on with it. My... Uh... Oh. My, my comic strip appears every day in the uh, L.A. Times, if you could see Look at it this. right here. It has, it has a theme song. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I also enjoy, uh, you know, reading it uh, right under Doonesbury. It's a great yeah. honor, you know. My, my syndicate, uh, my, my strip has been running for... The syndicate. 10 years and 11 years and my syndicate is a uh, universal uh, and uh, it is the, the the syndicate that uh, discovered picked up uh, Doonesbury Good boy. you know back when he was like a college student in Yale uh, and uh, so they have a tradition of trying to find uh, unorthodox and uh, you know political uh, strips that have social commentary and I, I used to share an editor with Aaron Magruder who who drew the Boondocks comic strip. Wow. So, yeah. um, you know, I, it was, it's the perfect place for me. They've been very supportive. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... Uh, so you must have fans. What are your fans like? They Twitter I, you and they... 
What do they do? I have crazy fans. Yeah, I have uh -oh. some, some rabid crazy fans. That's good. I appreciate. You got that. any stalkers? That's when you really make it. Oh yeah, I've got. I've got. I've. I've I don't want to encourage them, but I, <laughs> I, oh, I have man. a couple of stalkers that have been. Well, at least one has been around for uh, about 20 years. Oh. And. Uh, Goes in and out of uh, finding things to do and then coming back to stalk me and then finding things to do. And Hi, Gewalt. Yeah. And so. then, you know, you have people that you don't want to see that just show up at your house when they're just walking by while well, you're no, trying to nobody, get to your car. Yeah, well. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, uh, I started out as a uh, political oh, cartoonist. These are awesome. Um, when I was in college, you know, every, every editorial cart cartoonist draws comics for their college paper, you know. Oh, so yeah. that's where I picked up a kind of a drawing five days a week, which is, which is uh, it's it's almost now a political cartoonists are endangered species, you know. We're, we're, we're really with the death of print, dying print. But uh, here's some examples. I take uh, some of my comics and I turn them into posters oh. because merchandise is very important. Uh, these days where, you know, everybody's, uh, you got to make a living somehow. So uh, this is, uh, I'm a big supporter of the Dream Act students. Um, here's an editorial cartoon I did uh, starring uh, my daughter, uh, oh. who was six at the time. Um, and I was watching the uh, Sonia Sotomayor uh, confirmation hearings. And I was getting really pissed off uh, seeing what the Republicans were saying to her. Aren't they fun? Uh, Aren't they just fun? They're great guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and... Uh, so uh, usually I would draw an angry editorial cartoon, but this time, uh, as you can witness the pink and soothing pink in the background and all the toys, uh, I thought the Republicans were really missing an opportunity here. They were demonizing Sonia Sotomayor, who is a badass Puerto Rican uh, lady uh, who uh, only went to Yale, you know, so obviously oh. she's not that bright. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it ended up being the, the first Latina Supreme Court justice uh, and, uh, and was going to be a role model for all, all you know, little... It was. Wait little a minute, didn't they confirm her? I brown thought they girls. did. They did, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I drew this, uh, you know, my stuff comes out like when it's happening. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so here she, uh, I projected my, my daughter playing judge with all, all her little oh. dolls and stuff and uh, her little oh. bear Pepito is here on the witness stand. <laughs> He's testifying. I don't know who he's testifying against, but uh, so Sonia Sotomayor uh, has one of these in her oh, chambers, uh, really and signed by myself and my daughter, and she even th sent me a thank you note on Supreme Court stationery, which is oh, really cool. Oh wow! It's I think it. I think I, if, if I ever get on death row, I'm gonna whip that thing out. <laughs> you mean the record label or the? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, um, so uh, it, it's it's it came out on 60 Minutes uh, a couple of months. They don't ago, let so. you. I mean, they wouldn't they wouldn't fry a, a Latino, would they? No, I they mean, would never uh, treat a Latino or a black person unjustly in our criminal yeah, system. Yeah, right. You know, it's all right, boys. He's white. Turn him loose. <laughs> uh, and here here's one of my more popular ones. It's uh, Geronimo. Show me your papers. Oh God, that's great. Uh, and. <laughs> That is great. It was really cool showing this. I was in, in Albuquerque uh, like about two weeks ago, uh, and I spoke to lots of different people. They were actually going crazy because Breaking Bad was just coming to an end, right? Uh. I got out, out of there just in time. Uh, but uh, <laughs> they, uh, I spoke to a Native American uh, high school, uh, a charter school out there, and uh, it was say, really don't cool. Don't say charter around here. Yeah. <laughs> right. I got to pay a dollar. Uh, they should pay me. So... Uh, uh, it was nice to show. I have I do a lot of cartoons about uh, Indian mascots and sports and all that. So it was really nice to show them. I don't think they'd ever seen you know three cartoons in a row uh, about the same topic uh, about this topic. Um, That's heavy. Yeah, it was really it was really cool. And, uh, hippie. I did for years. I mean, uh, I think 2010 was the year I drew nothing but Arizona cartoons. You yeah. know, because Arizona. Oh, uh, speaking of which. Uh, here's a cartoon I did <laughs> with the immigrant crossing sign. That's awesome. I showed that to, I put it on Facebook and a friend of mine said, hey, that's pretty cool. Why do you have three pregnant punk rockers running across the highway? <laughs> you better hire that guy for a writer. <laughs> and let's see what else. Don't uh, you aspire to be a writer, do you not? 
Uh, I am a writer, Glenn. No, I don't mean that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I understand this part, but I mean, oh. oh, oh. And then they, they, he insults me and he rem remembers my name. Right? <laughs> so that's, that's a double whammy. Go ahead. Uh, so, and here's, uh, this is just uh, kind of a, uh, I call him the Zutador. I combined uh, <laughs> the Zoot Suit, the famous Zoot Suit image, yeah. and with a, uh, I, I'm really into Mexican Lucha Libre. Yeah. Uh, and I use a lot of the masks and stuff in my work. Because uh, I also paint, so I paint to kind of, un uh, bundle my my brain a little bit untangle it and uh, not think about all this stuff all the time but uh, I love those Mexican wrestling movies uh, like from the early they're 60s. great my, I, oh my god you know I, I remember growing up uh, and my uh, in San Diego my mom would take me on Saturdays to the the Cinerama which was like this big dome in Tijuana it's just a movie theater and it, they would have the, the Saturday matinee, like oh. all the Lucha Libre spy and horror movies you could watch, you know, for like two bucks, you know. Wow. Uh, all day long. And then uh, oh. here's a, uh, <laughs> this recently came up uh, when uh, the Disney company had uh, issued a, uh, uh, an application to trademark Dia de los Muertos, uh, the Day of the Dead Mexican holiday, which is coming up uh, right now. Uh, and... They they have a three um, animated movie coming out on Dia de los Muertos, and they said, "Well, we're not trying to copyright the holiday. We're just trying to copyright, you know, the idea. Dia de los Muertos, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fruit roll-ups and uh, yeah, Happy oh. Meals and stuff like that, oh, you know." That's nice. uh, so subsequently, when when the public became enraged, they uh, changed the uh, the they dropped the, the the patent application, the trademark. And then said, uh, "We're we're changing the name of the movie to you know something so, else." So I reimagined uh, Disney coming as a big, scary, uh, reanimated dead mouse, muerto mouse, <laughs> coming to trademark wow. all of your culture. You know, that would be a good theme for the haunted mansion. You know, they could just do the whole thing in uh, Day of the Dead, and uh, you know, my... I'm sure they're doing it right okay. now. You know? Yeah, and then uh, here's, oh, speaking of the Day of the Dead. Uh, <laughs> you got it there. That's this great. This is a, a taco cart guy is the most popular character in my yeah. comic strip, even though he hardly says anything. Uh, but who doesn't love tacos, right? I mean, come on. So uh, let's hear it for tacos. And uh, hey. so, so I did this for Day of the Dead, and uh, vegetarians would see this and say, oh my God, I love this vegetarian cartoon that you did. What? It's a great <laughs> vegan cartoon, you know, th no meat th tacos, right? So I said, yeah, but that's exactly what I was thinking. Was it? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh. Vegetarians are very gullible. <laughs> they don't get all the proteins they need, I think. So. No, they don't. Hey, Glenn. Oh, what, Ron? Our time has just sped by. We need to say uh, goodbye to Lalo. Oh, you'll no. you kind enough to come back next month. Ooh. Would you, please? Would you? Would yeah, you? maybe you can ask me some questions then. Oh. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> oh, boy. Huh? Well, we got that going on. Uh, I guess I'll go out with something insulting. <laughs> Why stop now? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and germs, uh, boys and girls, and uh, cats and kitties, voots and vooterinis. I hope you all come back next month. More with Lalo, and it's going to be awesome. And uh, if uh, you come back next month and I am dead, avenge my death. Okay. <laughs> All the kids in Spanish speak, oh, no. and they play at hide and seek, oh, <laughs> with a bug muy comico, a little cucaracha mia, just as happy as can be, when I'm not around to see ya. She, she is eating my tortilla, la cucaracha, la cucaracha, running up and down the wall, la cucaracha. <laughs> Me, I love you not at all. Um.